it as a lot of credit. <laughs> Even though I'm only looking here on the online community element of it, from the, not the whole project, you'd be glad to know. Um, the core aim of this HLF-funded four-year project, which officially ended in November 2014, was to ensure free access to the Aerocoms collection. And the leaflet downstairs covering the whole of the project Please, project, please come down to pick up the leaflet for um, further details about the different elements to it. The element I've been looking at is the um, active encouraging online engagement and the raging activities then to recruit virtual volunteers and to build then this online community. As the project is also finished, we now have the evaluation report. Um, that's based on various evidence gathered during the, the whole of the project life. Um, and the content of, the, of this evaluation report will also be a very useful tool for us for planning future projects as well. And I'll share a few things with you today. The project's bilingual website then was launched in June 2012. By October 2014, the website had over 2.4 uh, million unique uh, visitors. It's a very interactive website and the users then are encouraged to add images um, by contributing factual information about the places in the images already on the website, adding personal memories, and by adding their own photographs as well, both historic and contemporary. In the project view, the level of public involvement is one of Britain from above's biggest achievements. Traffic to the website exceeded expectations, with a good mixture of first-time and repeat users. By the end of the project, there were nearly 40,000 registered users. 6,684 individuals, or virtual volunteers, contributed over a quarter of a million contributions to the website. One virtual volunteering opportunity um, included helping us to locate their unidentified images. When the cataloguing team were unable to identify the location of an image, the images were uploaded into the unlocated gallery on the website and our virtual volunteers then were encouraged to try to find the location of these images themselves. Of the 1,333 images found, uh, what we then look um, um, unidentified um, locations, over 1,000 images have been correctly identified by volunteers. That's 72%. Therefore, enriching the collection through crowdsourcing was another success of the project. And evidence gathered during the project shows that volunteers themselves as well recognise the value of their contribution to the project. Our virtual volunteers' input was important to the success of the project, and super users, what we call those who had contributed most to the website, were acknowledged as special events. Here are a picture of our super users, I've gone missing, did have photographs on there, there we are. Um, this is our super user, the one who actually contributed the most, class 31, um, he contributed 55,523 um, comments or information to the website. <laughs> he was nearly retired, I should say. <laughs> we also then um, worked hard at introducing new audiences to area photographs as well. We had various online campaigns. We established groups on there so people can share information and interests like railways, not surprisingly, but my favourite, chocolate factories. Um, we also use social media to engage with new audience. For example, the Knit for Britain from Above campaign mainly was run through Twitter. And it was noted in the evaluation that Twitter successfully engaged with a younger audience and was effective at feeding traffic to the site as well. So it's interesting for us to have those figures. Virtual volunteering events encouraged, um, ensured as well that the collection was accessible to all. We wanted to encourage everyone to be part of our online community. One example here is a project that we ran in conjunction with Age UK's IT and Biscuit Week. And this was designed to reach those classed as digitally excluded. The website then successfully captured older users, um, website used by over 65s, increased significantly over the time of the project. And the report also shows that the Britain From Above project improved its users' web confidence through engagement activities offered, especially again in those over 65. But who were our audience? Not surprisingly, maybe, thinking of the subject, we a high percentage were male, as were our super users, and of our super users, many were recently retired as well. Um, so maybe not as diverse in some respect, but we did reach a very diverse geographical audience with a growing end from overseas as well. 
interestingly then, we are also able to compare our audience, our website audience, with um, uh, audience through the other activities. So it's very interesting to be able to compare those as well. And this will be very in, in sort of useful information for us for future project planning, especially if we want to target you know, potential virtual volunteers for a crowdsourcing uh, a project again in the future. Other very valuable information for us from the evaluation report as well, which was gathered throughout the, the project life, was why people visit the website. If we know why they're coming there, again, that will help us with um, targeting specific audiences. And understanding more about user modes will be useful data to support the planning and promotion of our future projects. Finally, what about the future of the collection of the website? There is a 10-year maintenance and management plan in place. The website will continue to operate. Users will st still be able to contribute to the images as they can now. To achieve this sustainable legacy, um, continued awareness of the website will be key. Uh, through our touring exhibition, travelling uh, around um, England, Scotland and Wales, and the project's publication, book on sale here today as well. Um, since the end of the project, we've had 3,000 new users registered on the website, which is encouraging, encouraging as is the feedback we received during the online surveys on levels, levels of advocacy and likelihood to return to the website as well. Though the effect of a static future is largely untested, our online community has been built, which we hope will encourage the future interaction on the website and the future for the project as well. For further information, please visit the website or come down and see me on the stand downstairs. Thank you.